Uh, yeah, I'm Ben Hancock. So uh, Managing Director of Oscar Acoustics, and we are Great Britain's number one spray applied acoustic finishes specialist. Uh, we actually created the industry about uh, 25 years ago now. Uh, so I'm going to be discussing the role sound plays in education and uh, and how our range of environmentally friendly recycled acoustic sprays can play their part in improving the health and learning of uh, students. So acoustic concerns often surround venues such as cinemas, concert halls or rec recording studios. However, when it comes to learning environments, the detrimental effect of excessive noise on both academic performance and teachers' health is often an afterthought. The World Health Organization, WHO, recommends maximum noise levels of 35 decibels for good teaching and learning conditions in schools. Unfortunately, this is often exceeded, though. It found the average classroom noise level to be 65 decibels. Um, acoustic discomfort can disrupt the learning process by breaking down important student-teacher communication. It's a situation that needs to be remedied fast. Put simply, sound quality matters because pupils must hear their teachers in order to learn. When classrooms are too reverberant, pupils find it hard to concentrate and understand their teachers. This inhibits the learning process from the outset. Excessive noise levels um, are often a consequence of sound reflecting off hard interior surfaces. This particularly impacts younger children who need optimal conditions for hearing and comprehension as their listening skills are not as developed. A great example I like to use is a restaurant. This restaurant, like many classrooms, is packed with hard surfaces and could have a reverberation time of three seconds plus. So you're at a table, you're chatting to your friends and you say the word cat, for instance. The word would bounce around the room for three seconds until it decayed by 60 decibels. Within that three seconds, you continue talking and you say between seven to ten more words. Now, all those words are bouncing around the room, becoming tangled and hitting you from all angles, which makes it hard for you to understand what's being said. And this is happening on multiple tables, creating a sonic battleground. So what do you do? You talk louder. This, of course, increases the volume within the space and makes it even harder to understand. The restaurant's now getting busier and the issue is getting worse. People are leaning in towards the center of the table to understand their friends. The alcohol is now kicking in, not in the school, granted, um, but the place is now getting crazy. Um, nobody's noticed that there's music playing, but this all along has been adding to the problem. In the taxi on the way home, some people are leaving a review on TripAdvisor about the noise levels, and 25%, according to research, will never return, meaning the restaurant is constantly having to attract new customers to stay in business. And here's the point. You choose not to return as the experience was unpleasant and carried a level of stress you were unprepared to pay for again. But if you're a child, what do you do? If, as a teacher, this is your workplace, what do you do? With financial pressures and a family to feed, it's not always that easy to go and find another job. Okay, restaurants are an extreme case, but it demonstrates the point perfectly. High noise uh, levels, high no levels of uh, poor quality sound are stressful and make people unhappy. Sometimes they don't even realise why they feel like this. They just dread going to work. A pupil or teacher like this is not productive and can even become toxic. Now, what most people don't realise is that prolonged high noise levels can actually cause serious non-hearing related health problems. Um, here's a slide that uh, I'm sure you'd recognise if ever you've seen one of my presentations. Um, noise pollution is a serious problem. The chief medical officer in England pre-COVID said it is second only to air pollution in damaging public health. While the World Health Organisation, WHO, highlights issues such as tinnitus, sleep disturbance, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, adverse birth outcomes, and cognitive impairment in children. Is it any wonder that 44% of teachers in England plan to quit within five years? 
Annette Cusain, a teacher in Nottinghamshire, said, every Monday I teach lessons in a large room with only hard surfaces and hard furniture. The echoes are a nightmare and I can rarely get my voice heard. I always leave school that day with a major headache. This exemplifies how classroom noise can ruin a lesson even before taking teacher ability, external sounds or student behaviour into account. But is it any wonder that pupil attention is being negatively affected, resulting in poor behaviour? One study found, on average, speech intelligibility in just the fourth row of a classroom is a mere 50%. If students can only hear half of what the teacher is saying, how can they be expected to learn and retain information? If they can't hear what's being said, it's a long time to sit without getting bored, resulting in increased unruliness. With school class sizes rising, it's likely this problem is only going to get worse. The role of acoustics in architecture is not just about achieving optimum levels of sound. With the right acoustic solutions in place, it can actually enhance the way people interact with each other and the space around them. I'll give you a great example. After spraying a multi-purpose school, um, sports and dining hall with our Sona spray product, the, the head teacher, delighted with the result, reported that they'd actually been throwing away less food. It seems the hall was such an unpleasant place to be, the kids were leaving food to go and play. The introduction of Sona Spray gave them a relaxing, comfortable place to interact with their friends whilst eating. This in turn had an impact on their social development and gave them the energy levels required for concentration. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Sona Spray range, here's a brief summary and some pretty pictures. Um, so K13, um, it's the most economical finish we do. It's the coarsest finish we do. Uh, it's quite um, an industrial um, looking finish. Uh, it's in light grey on the upper walls just here. Um, and here's K13 in grey at the award ring in Notting Hill Prep School. Um, and through the corridors as well. Uh, some of the classrooms as well, it really looked great. Uh, K13 Special, um, this is the next finished up and it's milled for longer, so it's uh, a, a finer finish. Um, it's here in white on the, on the um, straight onto the roof deck at Central Sussex College. Um, and we did the lower half of the, the hall in our acoustic blocks as well, uh, which gave a really impressive reverberation time of one point two, three seconds, uh, which almost felt like a living room. It was incredible. Um, here it is applied directly onto concrete with deliberate shadow gaps um, and uh, created in stop bead um, and uh, in black here on the ceiling, but you don't really see it with the lighting facing down. Sony Spray FC, it's finest still and the finest non troud finish we do. Um, as a result, it's still extremely fast to install. And um, Carlos mentioned the Blavatnik School of Government. Um, here it is applied uh, in rings all the way up in white. Um, and it just follows the lines of whatever's underneath it. So they'd actually tried to do this in acoustic panels originally. Um, and they gave up after three because Every single panel was a completely different size, shape, and trying to get it to go around a corner was impossible. Um, and in the, the teaching spaces as well, and then in black in their, in their lecture theatre as well. Um, Sona Spray FCX. This is um, sprayed and troweled um, to give a flat but pitted surface. So you can see it on these amazing pods at Hope Academy, um, and they were sprayed in Wilmot Dixon yellow. Um, I believe it was a design and build project, which is probably not surprising. Uh, so we sell a huge amount of this because it appears very similar in most situations to acoustic plaster uh, with the advantage of being a fraction of the time to install and therefore reduce cost as well. Um, so a huge advantage of it as well is that it can be applied on to, you know, pretty much any surface in any shape. So it just takes the shape of whatever's underneath. Um, so it's a lot easier to create this um, out of the FCX than acoustic plasters with their rigid backboards. Um, so Oscar Elite, this is the smoothest acoustic finish we do and actually on the market, um, and it appears the same as roller painted plaster. 
And so here it is applied in the lecture theatre at Morton College, Oxford, and then also Oxford New College. Um, that's far from new. Um, I think those floorboards are 500 years old. So the advantage we have over other acoustic plasters is that we're able to sand the final coat. Others that have unforgiving resin bound finishes are limited to what you're able to achieve with the trowel. This can make shapes extremely tricky. Now you can't see, but this is actually domed, this ceiling. The emissions of the products used in a build are also becoming increasingly important with more certification systems dedicating entire sections to it. Our products are M1 classified as low building materials. They're compliant with the California Department of Public Health. They're Green Guard Gold certified for indoor air quality, uh, also BREEAMS rating. Um, they have EPDs and uh, they contribute up to 17 points uh, towards the uh, towards lead as well. Our um, our well being also depends heavily on the survival of our planet. So. Environmental qualities are just as important. Our finishes are made from high-grade recycled paper and renewable plant-based fibres with specialist water-based adhesives treated to achieve Class O fire rating. Um, the range also contributes towards lead, BREEAM, SCAR, Living Building Challenge and Passive House. Um, all installations are carried out by a fully trained in-house teams to complete the environmental jigsaw. Oscar Acoustics are ISO 14001 certified. We're also now committed to becoming carbon negative for our entire operation and are being independently assessed um, by Positive Planet. Science Break K13 was used at the Enterprise Centre at the University of East Anglia. Um, this was uh, an archetype project. Um, it was designed and delivered to achieve passive house standard and BREEAM um, outstanding rating. The outside was actually thatched as well, which really did look cool. The project won multiple awards, including REBA East Regional, REBA Sustainable Project of the Year, and also Best Education product, uh, Project at the BREEAM Awards. Zone Spray K, uh, K13 was used throughout the building, contributing maximum BREEAM points whilst giving a finish that complemented the building really well. Fergus Rolf, uh, who's the team manager at the Enterprise Centre, this is a lovely quote. He said, um, everyone loves the finish. Second to the exterior thatch, it's the most asked about and photographed material in the building. During our regular tours, people are always asking what it is and what it's for. They love the fact that it has a purpose and it's on show so they can see how the building works. So how well do the acoustic sprays work? I walked into this school um, and it was um, the, the room you're seeing now uh, wasn't sprayed, but it was identical to the next room we're about to go into, which was 70% sprayed. Um, so I turned up on site. It was a very relaxed site, as you can see. Um, but the, the sound difference between the two rooms was so extreme, I had to take this really unprofessional looking video on my mobile phone. So hopefully this will work. So then going through to the room, this has been 70% sprayed. Huge difference. Now, that slight twang you can hear is actually from the 30% down here that hasn't been sprayed. So it's a massive, massive difference. So due to the popularity of the product, we've hugely outgrown our current premises and are currently building a new 16,000 square foot Oscar Innovation Centre. This comprises of a large warehouse and product development facility cloaked by a brick facade hiding the warehouse from the road and the houses opposite. So I'm not going to go into any detail on this today as I'm going to save it for a whole uh, other presentation um, on completion. 
But uh, what it does enable us to do, though, is A, meet our rapid expansion needs and B, create a brand new show home for all our products. So once built, um, probably around the end of the year, we'd love to invite anyone uh, to drop by for a coffee and see all the products in situ. So that's that's me done. Please do follow us on our social media channels um, and find me on LinkedIn as well. I'm Ben Hancock. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you, Ben. I think that's the first presentation I've ever seen where you managed to squeeze a kitten into a professional presentation about a product. <laughs> it's just cute cats win every time, don't they? <laughs> well done. Um, certainly, certainly won me over. Um, yes, I've got a question from Bob, Ed Ed Bob Eden, who's asking, are there any problems, you did actually cover this, I think, but you, are there any problems associated with textured surfaces and cleaning regimes, health concerns? I think you remember... I think I asked you that one about the blavatnik, and you said what you really want to do is kind of keep it out of arm's reach. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah, so if you keep it above head height, um, if you're putting it on walls, that's that's ideal. Um, actually, most of the time, the ceiling's the best place to put it. It's, it's up there. It's out of the way. It's not going to get dusty unless you're blowing, you know, dirty air across it. Um, so, yeah, works really well. Looks after itself. And ABW architects are asking, can any of these finishes be painted? Uh, yes. So you, you can actually order them in uh, whatever colour you like. They're all available in bespoke colours. Um, some of the coarser finishes have got minimum order runs. But actually, when you're doing a school, um, you know, they're normally quite sizable and, and well within that. Um, you can paint it. Um, if you if you're going to paint it, it's best to spray paint it, but spray with a very, very fine mist jet um, from a distance where as you're spraying, the, the beads are settling on the surface and almost drying as they touch the surface. So what you're trying to do is create uh, many, many layers of beads so the sound can travel around them. If you were to go in and try and spray it in one coat, what you're going to do is create a... a, a a barrier, like an eggshell over the surface, and that's going to prevent the higher frequency sound and mid frequency from passing through it and into the product. So you will reduce the performance. So there's a way of doing it, yes, but bespoke colours are the way if you can. Um, I was intrigued really by this that comment you said where you there was this kind of evidential link that there was increased food consumption that mm. was happening as a result of better sound. Um, and I also really like the comment where you where you mentioned that students were actually asking what the material was, and when they found out what it was, they were more intrigued about it. You know that the idea that there was this kind of physical expression of the material on the surface of the building itself that it had a purpose. Mm. Uh, and I just wondered whether, I mean, all of that kind of feeds into that idea. I suppose that bigger idea, really, that education spaces need to be somewhere where the building itself is in a sense an experiment where children are kind of learning or piecing together how their environment is and why it's put together the way it is and that sort of questioning is what kind of allows children to kind of develop their own ideas about the spaces they might want to occupy in the future or whatever so I, I quite like those uh, both those points but I just wanted just to, just to finish off the idea that obviously there's always been that drive or certainly was in the last 20 years to kind of increase increase social the social nature of schools so the larger spaces more communal spaces but that in a sense is antithetical to the idea that you know in reality i suppose you want really small school really small spaces with very minimal kind of acoustic problems so that kids can actually hear what teachers are saying i just wondered if you'd seen evident or what your experience was of going into schools where where do you think it works best do you see large kind of open plan schools working better than or do you just think schools should have small classrooms? Well, if a if a room has got a problem with the acoustics, I mean, how many how many times do you go on a Zoom call with somebody and they're in a small meeting room and the the buzz, the reverb in that room is terrible. Um, so small rooms can have the problem as well. So really, for a large room, we can, you know, you treat it with one of our finishes, and it, it really makes no difference. If you've got open plan classrooms um, with no barriers between them, that can be slightly more difficult. And you, you need to increase the material depth. Um, so a great example of that was the Glasgow School of Art 
we we sprayed the entire building. But as a um, value engineering exercise, I believe um, the specified material depth was reduced by half all the way through the building. And actually, there whilst the the acoustics were far better than a concrete building should have been, um, they had open plan classrooms on different levels on balconies, yeah, yeah. and there were some reports of of sound problems on it. So um, yeah, you do have to be careful, but but with the right, you know, if you if you specify the correct material depth uh, and the correct areas, then it's no problem at all. I mean, we had four classes learning in one space in a school in London. Um, they they were really struggling. They had bookcases between, but with big high ceilings over the top, so it was almost impossible. Um, and then we went in, we sprayed, I think we sprayed about 30 millimetres of the spray on there to give them class A absorption. And the difference was incredible. And they carried on with four classrooms in, in the same hall, if you like. It was amazing. Oh, that's so that it would be difference. chaotic otherwise, but obviously you managed to manage yeah. the, uh, the acoustics there. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, Ben. I'm sorry I'm being nudged to move on. No, um, that's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're now moving on to our next